All right, guys, so I want to make a video showing you what the most common mistakes are that I see from the white belt tests. I have, I save everybody's tests. I write down each thing, the mistakes that they make, and I've gone through all of those, and I basically put it on a sheet of paper, and I'm going to talk about it today, what were the most common things that I saw. So let's go down the order. That's how I usually like to grade tests, as I typically go right down the order of the curriculum sheet. So first thing is attention stance. So there are three main things for the attention stance that I typically see and correct. Uh, one of the first things is that when people are doing this, they have their fingers. If you see, all my fingers are apart, like this. I want knife hands, just like this, fingers, all together, thumb, same thing, right on the side. Next thing that I see is the uh, feet apart. I have this problem too, because I was in the military, and this is how you stand at attention in the military. But for Taekwondo, it is like this. Our feet are going to be together, our toes are going to be together. And the third is what I refer to as the penguin clap. This is the penguin clap. Looks like a penguin, right? All right, so those are the three things. You don't have to do a penguin clap. Yes, sometimes I'll say attention and you kind of see me, my hands go here, and sometimes it does make a sound. But I see people do it every single time. They're like, like they're snapping to attention. You don't have to do the penguin clap. Don't, don't do the penguin clap. All right, next is going to be our Jumbe stance, our ready stance. So with this, what I see a lot is this. People kind of just throw it out there. Boom, they step out. They usually step out with the correct leg. I don't see a problem with that. What we need to remember is this is a slow, getting ready type thing. Our hands come up with the breath as our foot steps out. And then it sets down at the same time. Our hands and feet set down at the same time. So I'm going to roll up my sleeve just a little bit so that you can see my heel. When I do this, my hands come up. They're all the way at the top as I take that breath in. And then as I breathe out, my hands go down, they make fists, boom, and my heel sets down at the same time that my hands are in their position. So it should take about this long to go to Jumbe. We're not gonna do it like the karate guys, where they push out with a lot of power. It's a nice deep breath in and out. Heel lands at the same time. My hands are about at the same level as my belt knot, and then if you're looking straight at me, you should be able to see the knot in my belt in between my hands. So my arms are slightly bent, they're not relaxed out here, and it's about a fist away from the knot in my belt. So, again, the most common mistakes that I do see are that the hands and feet do not end at the same time. People are a little bit too fast with this, um, so I want you to kind of be aware of that. Another thing that this is just going to be for a general overview for the test is relax. Relax, relax, relax. Um, you can sit here, and I mean, most people aren't used to it, but you can sit and talk to the video, talk to me through the video, and that is fine. Um, you know, explain anything. If you're having trouble with something, explain it to me during the test. Maybe, you know, uh, I'm here to help you. So if you explain, hey, I'm having a problem with this, that gives me something to especially look for, and then I can give you drills and anything else to help you fix that. But a lot of people tend to be really tense in all their movements. Um, so relax, breathe, relax. You can bounce around a little bit in between, loosen up your muscles. We're not trying to be tense whenever we're doing this. So the next is our fighting stance. So let's see, for fighting stance, I have leaning forward, elbows are too far out, and then feet are lining up. So I'm in my fighting stance, right? A big thing that I see is this. You see how at the hips I'm bent and my torso is leaned slightly forward like this? We want our torsos up like this. Our weight is distributed equally uh, between both of our legs. So I don't want you leaning forward like this. Um, you're not going to be able to kick very easily. You know, you could be able to kick from the back, but then you're probably going to end up leaning your head off to the side. There's going to be problems coming up from that. So we want to have our torso, our trunk, is going to be straight up and down with the ground. We don't want to be leaning forward. Another thing that I see that's very common is people with this type of a uh, posture. You see this right angle right here with my elbow? On the other side. It's usually the front one that does this, this right angle. Boom. Yes, I want the hands up in your fighting stance, but I don't want this elbow up. This is my hands up in my fighting stance. See how my hands are they're right next to my face? But you see how my elbow is close? I'm actually resting slightly on my own chest with my elbows. The reason I'm doing this is because if you try holding this position forever, 
man, these shoulders are going to be exhausted. And then when you've already burnt out your shoulders, instead of being able to go back to where you should have started at, your hands are going to end up being way down here, especially for a fighting stance. We want our hands up for our fighting stance, fighting stances, you know, preparing for punching, not just Taekwondo sparring, but like a street fight, somebody's punching at you, your hands, you want to stay up. You want to be able to block with your hands instead of here. When we're doing Taekwondo sparring, you'll, you'll see me a lot with my hands down here and that's fine. But for a street fight, fighting stance, boom, we're going to be here. So we want to relax our arms, our shoulders here so that they're up. Um, and then feet too linear. So if you see this tape right here on the ground, I see a lot of time people in their fighting stance are kind of like this, where their heels are almost in a straight line. Our fighting stance is actually more squared. I would imagine that I'm in my Jumbei stance about how the distance that that is apart for you. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody. Make it comfortable. And then you kind of step back and then angle it slightly. But you notice how there's this gap here instead of this gap here very close. We want to have a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, but this is a little bit more squared forward type thing. Being able to punches, kicks, knees, whatever it is. Um, not so much for Taekwondo sparring, but more for a street type thing. Um, so next we have our sparring stance. So a lot of time I kind of get kind of the same thing with the weight of the hip tilted slightly forward or the chest tilted slightly forward. And I see that a lot of weight is typically over your front leg. I see a lot of people, they do this. So maybe you can see it, maybe you aren't able to see this, but right now I have about 70% of my weight on my front foot and you know 30% of my weight on my back leg, maybe more. So we want to make sure that our weight is evenly distributed. Not this, here, boom. Our hands are, they're here, one's across our chest, elbow is still in, it's not out here. Boom. These ones typically relax a little bit more when I'm in my sparring stance, my Taekwondo sparring stance. My hands are a little bit, they start dropping down. They're not up here next to my chin like they would be in my fighting stance. Um, so way over the front. Chest should be sideways, so sometimes I'll see this. And people put their chest completely forward. Like, that's how you should be for your fighting stance. But with your sparring stance, your chest is actually going to be to the side. I'm bladed off. My feet on a sparring stance are in a straight line. So this, that's different. This is going to be more of a fighting stance. This is more of a sparring stance. I'm sideways. I'm trying to give a littler targets for my opponent to actually score. Remember, if they're kicking on my back, they don't score. They have to kick here, which isn't going to score. If it's like this, it's already hidden. Then they only have this target. They don't have this target. I'm hiding targets from them. That's why we do that. Um, yep. So, And then uh, same thing. I want you guys to relax. So you can show me it with a little bit of a bounce in here. Um, Relax, 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 relax. It's actually the very first thing that I put at the top. I should have said it first. Relax. All right, next is switching. So one of the big mistakes that people do when they switch is they don't turn the chest all the way side to side, and then they keep their weight over their front foot. So typically, I'll see something kind of like this. This is one of the most common mistakes, is their chest faces forward. Boom, boom, and they do this. See how my chest is not turning? You can't even see my belt turning. Yeah, I'm switching my legs. Cool. All right, that's not a switch, though. So switch is for Taekwondo sparring stance. See how my chest is facing that way? My belt, the knot on my belt is facing that way. Boom. My belt went all the way to the other side. My chest went all the way to the other side. I'm facing the other way. And I'm switch again. Boom. Here, here. Now, another thing is people don't use their arms to switch. They tense in their arms, like I've been talking about. They kind of do this. I want you to use your arms to switch. So this back arm is going to actually push forward. This front arm pushes back towards the back and I help switch. Boom, boom, boom. As I switch, I do a little bit of bounce in between. So relax again, switch your chest all the way when you're doing this. So don't just face towards the front as we're doing this. Next, we've got our jab. So one of the things that a lot of people do with their jab, the first thing that I have down is they reach. Remember what I was talking about that lean? Boom, like that. So people leap, reach like this with their jab. They're like, oh, I'm going to get that more distance. Well, if you hit somebody with that, well, it's not going to be a very strong jab, first of all. Um, you're putting yourself in more danger. Uh, you're getting off balance. We're not going to do that. Remember when we do our jab, we reach with our hips. So my hip is slightly back. Boom, I reach with my hip. I turn my front foot. Boom. As I extend out in a straight line, punching with that. Um, next thing I have for the jab is people will 
raise their elbow up first, and then it makes it a hammer fist. Look, this ended like a jab. If I was to take a picture here, and I was to take a picture here, they look the same. So a lot of people, they only think about that beginning and the end. Remember, it's how it moves is much more important than how it ends. Yeah, it's all important, but we want to make sure that it's moving the correct way. So make sure we're not raising the elbow up and then hammer fisting it. Boom. See how that's a circular motion versus a straight motion. So the elbow actually points up at the very last second as we twist over with this. All right, and another thing is people will tend to drop this other hand. So I see this a lot. When they do the jab, they'll do the jab hand good, but they'll do this. And they pull this other hand back. Boom, exposing their face. When we're here, boom. This one, I pull my shoulder back because my hip moves back, but my hand stays next to my face. Boom, boom. I'm not gonna pull it back here where it drops away. We want to make sure that we're keeping it up next to our face as we're doing our jab. Next, we've got using the hips and then speed. So what I mean by using the hips as I'm here, I turn my hip. I mentioned this a little bit already, but I turn my hip as I pivot that front foot. Boom, here. I rechamber right back to the face so I don't bring it down. And then up, it goes in that straight line right back to my face. My hips are turning. That's where the power is. If you're wearing a belt, notice, boom. See how my belt is going side to side? That means I'm turning my hips from side to side. And then the last one is speed. I see a lot of people do their jab and when they demonstrate it to me, they demonstrate like this. Don't wanna see that. That's awesome that you know I can see the technique, I can see that you're doing it right, but I need to see it with speed. Remember, when you submit these videos, if it's too fast for me, all I do is I go and I play it on YouTube and I watch it at a quarter of the speed. I can slow you down. So you need to go fast. I need to see that you can put power and speed into these strikes. Don't worry about me seeing I can, as long as you have a good camera or you know good enough camera, most cell phones are good enough, I can just slow it down on YouTube. And then there you go. I can see the technique. You don't have to demonstrate it slowly for me. I want to see <laughs> hip turns, retracts back fast popping. If you're wearing a dobok, I should hear a pop. I want to see that speed and I want to see that power. A lot of these things are going to be the same for your cross. So the very first thing, and I have this underlined, is turn your hip. So we're here, we're doing our cross now. Boom. I want that hip turn and that means that bottom foot also turns because we're driving off that back leg. Boom. Hip goes first, hand comes out, twist, straight line, right back to the face, other hand. I try not to paper cut my face, but it's staying at the face, it's also not pulling back. Um, so we got hip. Then we also have uh, cocking and telegraphing. So that means I'm here, boom, and I do this and then punch. That's telegraphing or you know, it's called cocking. You can, when you cock, I usually want you to cock from a, another technique. Boom, this is my cock. Boom, for my cross, I use my jab. That pulled this side back for me and it's ready. But I don't want to see a cross like this. This is saying, hey, I'm going to do a cross. Don't do that. Don't, don't just yell it blatantly that you're about to do a cross. If your hand's here, boom, it comes from that spot. Turn my hip, go out, and I bring it back. Back to face. And then pushing off the back foot, like I said, pivot and push off that back foot. That hip, if I was to do this really slow, that hip leads. Well, we lead from the foot, then the hip goes, boom, then the chest goes, then here, all the way out, and then it comes right back to the face. No circular motions. So for that, we got our hip turn. Make sure you have it. Don't telegraph. Uh, make sure it comes back to the face, and then push off the back foot. I want to see that pivot, and I want to see that push off that back foot. Next, we have our low block. So. First one is starting on top of the shoulder. I see a lot. They start here. I want to see on top of the shoulder. Boom. Next thing is palm towards the face. This one's underlined, which means they had the most people make this mistake. Palm towards the face. Not palm starting down, facing towards my shoulder and coming down. Because notice, if I do this, there's no twist. Boom. The other hand twists, but the blocking hand doesn't twist. We want to start towards our face. See, I can look at my palm. Oh, look. It has that twist at the last second. If you're here, 
there's no twist. It can't twist unless I twist this way, but then I'm blocking with muscle and not my ulna and that, no, we don't do that. So make sure you start with your palm facing towards the face and then your other hand, uh, let me block with this one, your other hand goes towards and touches your belt. If you're not wearing a belt, it touches your hip bone. So you feel the hip bones on both sides. I want you to feel that. When you're wearing a belt, your belt sits right over your hip bone. So other side so you can see it. Boom. And I feel my hip bone through my belt. Sometimes I will see this. Well, you see how my hand is in front of my body? I want to see it right here. It's right on your side. Boom. Right th on your belt. Or if you're not wearing your belt, right on your hip bone. So for your low block, uh, start on top of the shoulder. Palm facing towards the face. And hand ends on the belt. Uh, next is our high block. So on this one, first thing I have is palm of the blocking hand starts facing upwards. Sometimes I'll receive it like this. Again, there's no twist here. I want, boom, twist, twist. So palm starts facing up and then ends facing out. Um, next, I want the forearm over the head. So a lot of time I will receive this. Make sure you can see my head, boom. So you see how my hand is in line with my nose? I want my wrist, boom, right here, in line with my opposite ear. See? Just like that. I don't want this. I definitely don't want this. Imagine something's coming right down on your face. Boom. Hits you right in the face. No. I want it over across wrist in line with my opposite ear. My ulna, this bone right here, boom, forearm bone on the outside, is pointed outwards. Boom. And then the last thing for this is other hand to the belt, just like on your low block. Your other hand, your non-blocking hand goes right to your belt or your hip bone if you're not wearing a belt. So on that one, we have palm start facing up. We have forearm over the head, not hand over the head, not hand off to the side, forearm over the head. And then we've got our other hand on the belt. Next, we have our front snap kick. So the first thing I have on here is I want the full extension of the knee. So I receive a lot like this, where that gets here and that's not fully extended i want a full extension of the knee when you're doing this boom boom full extension of the knee um if you're not able to do that because of tight hamstrings one stretch your hamstrings more two kick lower kick lower i need to see a, a kick to the belt level on this so because this is a instep kick which means i'm kicking with the top of my foot boom so i need to see this to the belt level at least I would love to see a kick way up to the head, but if you're not able to fully extend your knee, then don't kick it that high. You're really, really the only place that you're gonna kick with it, the instep on this, is typically gonna be right to the groin. So you don't have to kick to the head on this, but I need to see that full extension. Um, next on that was relax your upper body. I will see this a lot. Don't do that, relax, relax. Just Throw the, nah, don't throw your arms around, don't, don't do that. But I want you to relax. So watch my hands. Um, this is a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over something real fast. This is called floating. Oh, I, I call it floating. My hands are floating around. Um, they stay relaxed as I move. You know, I move my shoulders. I move my hips. Notice how my hands, they stay up. I can move any direction I want. They stay up, but they're relaxed. They're floating in the air. I want you to float your hands as you do this kick. Boom. Your hands are up. Yes but they are relaxed. They kind of do their own thing. All they have to do is worry about staying up and then, oh, I need a block. They're already there. I don't want you to throw your arms down, which I typically don't see that because I know I address that, so I don't see the arms thrown down very often, but I want you to relax these hands. You can kind of throw them off to the side as you do it. Relax, float your hands. Um, so relax the upper body. I want to see your hips pushing forward. So sometimes I'll see this and the hips kind of sink backwards as people do their front snap kick, which typically makes their upper body go down forward. I want to actually see your hips push forward. So you have a slight hyperextension right here going back. Boom. You can imagine reaching for something. So if you have a partner or family member or somebody that can help you out, have them stick their hand out a little bit further. If you were to do this, you should not be able to reach their hand, but have them stick it out a little bit further than that and reach, boom, reach for it. I would like to see you do that. That'll really help you push your hips 
forward. If you go up onto the ball of the foot, of their base foot, that is perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. Um, then we have head dropping. So I'll see this. I'm over exaggerating, but I don't want to see your head dropping. Uh, people tend to drop their head because it gets their head lower, which means their kick to them looks like it is higher. So that tends to happen. Or they'll start to get tired, so they do a little bit of a crunch here Boom. to make them think that they're lifting their leg up higher. Remember, these are going to be different muscles. Abs, they're going to drop this down. We got our hip flexors. They're actually going to raise our leg up. It's different muscles. You, you can kind of allow them to help, but it's not going to be the same. We don't want to do that. We want to strengthen our muscles instead of forcing this little bit of a crunch to make our leg feel like it's higher. So try not to drop the head when you're doing it. And then the last thing is breathe. Breathe, breathe. <sighs> if you were in a live Taekwondo school, you would be doing ay -ya, ay -ya. every single time you do any kick or any punch or any step, footwork, anything, you would be yelling. Obviously, you know, if you're training at home, it might be midnight, your kids might be asleep. I don't want you yelling. And you don't have to yell. If you want to yell, sure, fine. It's to make you breathe, though. So, what I would like you to do is. <sighs> Every time, breathe. Breathe on the exertion, not <sighs> breathe on the exertion. <sighs> As it's going up, you're putting power. <sighs> That's when we breathe. That's when you breathe. Next is our half roundhouse kick. So the biggest thing that I see on the half roundhouse kick is what I call the L shape. I'm going to stand to the side, and I want you to look at my head, my hip, and my knee. Bam. Head, hip, knee. That's an L. Maybe. Maybe it's this side. I don't know. Whichever way you're looking at. But you can understand the idea, head, hip, knee, making this right angle, this L shape. I don't want you doing that. So I typically will see this. Boom. And now if somebody was looking straight down upon me, they would see my head, my hip, and my knee creating this L shape. I don't want you to do that. So what I want you to do, the reason, the main thing to correct this is really pivoting more on that bottom foot. So if you kind of pivot here, this creates the L shape. If you pivot and turn it all the way around, boom. Now, if you were to look at me from the top, you would see my head, my hip, and my knee are all in one straight line. L shape, straight line. I want you to have a straight line. So, if you're still, after rotating, you're still kind of realizing that there's a little bit of L shape, I want you to flex your glutes, boom. Just like this, straight line. Bring it all the way back to the rear. Turn, here. You can practice this one by going up first and then turn. Or you can just bring it around and turn. Head, hip, knee, all in one straight line. Then I need you to bring it all the way back to the rear. So don't here and then drop it down in front and then step back. I only need to see this and I need to see that. So I need to see the pivot and the reverse pivot. I really want you to pivot your foot. Notice how my toes are facing towards, towards you. I want you to face it all the way away and then all the way back. So have a full pivot, 180 degrees, 180 degrees back facing towards the front. That's what I want to see. When you're doing your actual roundhouse kick later on, you might not pivot all the way like that, but if we train it early on to do it the more difficult way like this, it's going to be easy, way easier to do all the more difficult stuff later on, and we can make it easier for us if we train it harder now. So just pivot all the way around. And then balance. Balance is really, that's one of the most difficult things for people just starting out. Balance isn't easy. I've been doing it for years. So sometimes I kind of forget how difficult it can be to balance. So work on your balance. Here, boom. Bring it back. If you have to do a little bit of a hop to bring it back, that's fine. I understand. Um, but I would need you to work on your balance. And make sure you end it in the rear. So L shape, pivot more. Flex your glutes to get rid of the L shape, uh, get your balance, and then make sure we bring it all the way out and we bring it all the way back behind us. Next, we've got our solo drill number one, and we have two parts of solo drill number one. So we have our linear. Linear looks like this. It's a half roundhouse kick and a half roundhouse kick. What I am looking for in that is that as soon as your half roundhouse kick lands, the other one goes. So this is one thing I do not want to see.
That's what I do not want to see. This is what I want to see. No time in between the kicks. That doesn't mean faster kicks. I can do this. But you notice how I didn't pause after my foot set down. That is what I'm looking for. Then the next part is our circular. I'm gonna be honest, the circular, I created this to make you pivot more. That's what it's for. I want you to pivot more. I want you to practice pivoting more and more and more because pivoting is so important as we progress in Taekwondo. It is massively important and you need to be able to do that. And that's one of the main reasons for this one. So with this one, what it is, it's a all the way out, all the way back. And now I'm going to pivot backwards 90 degrees. Now I'm facing that direction, all the way out, all the way back. Pivot backwards, 90 degrees. All the way out, head, hip, knee, all in one straight line. We're still doing a good half roundhouse kick. Pivot back. And then 90 degrees. Again, boom, here. Pivot back, 90 degrees. Like I said, I really just want to make sure that that pivot is good. That's, that's the main thing. That pivot on that one, that's what I'm looking for. So next, we've got solo drill number two. So the main things I am looking for in solo drill number two are going to be consistency. What I mean by that, so you showed me your, all right, so solo drill number two, let's, let's show it real fast. It's low block, low block, high block, high block, front kick, front kick. So what I'm looking for is consistency in your techniques. If you did your low block like this, in when you're demonstrating the low block and the low block portion, but then you did your low block like this, whenever you're putting stuff together and it gets sloppy, that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to make sure that your low blocks, if they were good in the low block section, they should be good here as well. If your high blocks were good in the high block section, they should be good here as well. I want your techniques to stay consistent. Even though you're adding other things in, I'm doing low block, low block, high block, high block, front kick, front kick. I'm looking for that consistency in between. That is the main thing I'm looking for. The second thing I'm looking for is the ability to flow from one technique to another. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not looking for speed. I'm looking for flow and the setups. So remember each block has a setup. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm looking to make sure that you do those setups. I don't want to see here, 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 where you only did one hand for the block. So again, that goes back to consistency. We want to set it up. And I want to see that you can flow and set up both hands at the same time. So I did a low block. Now both hands set up at the same time, low block. Now both hands set up at the same time, high block, both hands, same time, high block, front kick, front kick. If you switch whatever leg should go first on the front kick, doesn't, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just worried about consistency between your techniques and your ability to flow from one technique to the next. Then we've got our self-defense number one. All right, so self-defense number one, the absolute most important thing to me is that your head does not stay in the same place. So if you're looking at me from straight on front, you see the M in GMAU. All right, you see how you cannot see the M in GMAU. When I see a punch coming at me, I'm stepping and moving my head. Boom. You see that M? Yes, you do, because that's what they're punching at. They're punching straight on towards my face. Boom. So. The first thing that we're doing here is we are stepping with a block, but my head and my foot move at the same time. Block comes out as well, but I'm not doing this. This is the most common mistake that I see. Block, and then they step, and then they punch. I want to see all of that at the same time. Boom. Head moves out. I'm covering the M. Boom. You can see the M. Step, block. You can only, you don't have to use both hands for the block. It's more of an angled block anyways. Boom, I'm here. But my head moves at the same time as my feet. I'm doing kind of a little bit of a crunch with my side. Get my head out of the way as I do that block. And then I grab punch. 
You might get the grab, you might not get the grab in real life. The biggest thing is that you did not get hit. That is what is important. You do not get hit. I don't want you getting hit, period. But if somebody punches you, oh, and you got out of the way, you threw that hand up, the hand is a secondary block. Because maybe that punch and they realize you're moving out of the way and then they try to hook it a little bit, well, that's what the hand's there for. But the hand got out of, or the head got out of the way for that straight punch. That is what it's important. Boom, and then we have our grab punch. So if you break this down into two counts, the first count would be step, head move, block, grab punch. And when you start feeling more comfortable, you can step, head, move, block, grab, punch, and then step again to the front to enter into their space. If you do that or not, that's fine. That would be a more advanced movement for the same thing. But biggest thing is that the head moves at the same time as you step, boom. Head move, step, and block. Head move, step, block, all at the same time. That's going to be the biggest thing that I'm looking for on self-defense number one. Self-defense number two. So self-defense number two, there's really not too many mistakes on this one. It's pretty simple. We're blocking a kick with a low block. I want to see some power in this. You might not be able to use both hands on it based off the speed. And then I want to see, boom, boom. I want to see that kick follow on quickly. I want to see that kick try to land before their foot touches the ground. So if you had somebody and they threw that roundhouse kick and you blocked it, boom, you're hitting them in the groin before their foot even touches the ground. That's ideal. Then I also want you to realize how you can step with this. So if a roundhouse kick is coming around this way, I can step into the roundhouse kick with my block before they gain all of the power. That's the idea of that, before they gain the power. So if I'm anticipating on kicking somebody right here, boom, but they come in and they block my leg before I gain all that speed, momentum, power to be able to hit them where I thought I was gonna hit them, it's going to not hurt them as much for that block, and it's going to hurt me more, especially if they block up here. Next is you can move with the kick. So if that kick, I expect it to be coming around, a right leg kick, boom, here. I can move with the kick and then follow up with my other leg, depending on which leg step. Usually it would be if I'm stepping off to my right, my right leg steps, boom, and then I kick with my left. So those are going to be your main two options. You can also go forward, but if you go forward, you also risk getting punched in the face. You know, that's what people tend to do. They tend to punch in the face. So I wouldn't advise that one as much, but I want you to realize that there's those two options. You can go in and stuff the kick and kick, or you can go with the kick. And as the power starts to diminish after they, you know, they, the most power is going to be where they anticipated kicking you. If you move with the kick, one, it's going to diminish some of that speed because you're moving with it. And two, the power is already going to start diminishing after that point of where they expected to make contact with you. So I want you to realize that. And then the last thing is our kicking requirements. So we've got our 10 front snap kicks in 40 seconds on each leg. So far, it, I haven't had any problem with people not making the time. Biggest thing though that I see is people aren't consistent with their front snap kicks like they were doing earlier. I wanna see a consistent front snap kick. And then one of the things that people do because they're trying to pick up speed to be able, cause they get really worried about this time. The time, like I said, most, I, I haven't had anybody not make the time yet. So, but one of the big things that people will do to make sure that they make that time is they'll lean their body over their base leg, boom, and they'll kick, kind of like this, boom. I want these good kicks, boom, here. And because they lean over here, what I'll start to see is, let's use this line for reference. See how I'm here and my foot, this foot's on this line, this foot is off to the side, I kick, boom. What people will start doing is they'll start leaning and then they'll actually cross this leg. See how it's on the other side of the line now? To catch their balance because they're kicking, boom, their body's leaning so much to the side, they lose their balance and they step that way. I don't want you to do that, boom. I want you to get these good kicks in, boom, boom. You guys can do it. You're training, that's the reason we're training hard for this. You guys got this. Um, make sure we're not leaning so much to the side just to get that speed in um, that you end up falling over, crossing the legs. I don't want you to do that. So. Those are the most common mistakes for every technique for the white belt exam. Again, relax, relax, relax. Talk to me if you need to, you know, it's fine. Let me know how's your day going, what's, a, what's going on, it, it's fine. I want you to relax, I want you to do these techniques. You practice them, they should be second nature. Relax, do what you need to do, and I'm gonna give you feedback, drills, whatever it is that I feel like you need in order to help you progress.